What's up everyone, Jace Two Cents here and I'm bringing you a talking head video to give you sort of a breaking news, like a doot 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 doot. There's some big news that has hit this week. We're gonna talk about that. So feel free to minimize this video and just listen if you're busy and doing other things. There's no point in looking at me. I'm not doing any editing. I'm not even putting any music in this. Intel's got some problems right now because of a kernel leak happening on a hardware level in their x86 CPUs, x86 and 64 CPUs, so yeah. You're gonna to wanna to listen to this one. I'm not gonna dive too deep down the rabbit hole of what the problem is, trying to talk technical jargon and stuff about things that I truly, honestly, I'm not a CPU architect, I don't know how it works. I don't care how it works because between you and me, the what the problem is actually doing is less important to me than what the fix is, what's the effect of the fix gonna be, and what is at stake right now? And that's what most people should be concerned with. When it comes to the problem, on a high level, what's happening here is, I'm, I'm gonna put some article links down below. Please read them, check them out. They're written articles, but they, they are some of the sources I use for just kind of figuring out what's going on with all of this, so they're worth a read. Please check them out. But what's happening here is we've actually got three different problems. Three, not just one. Meltdown is the one that's kind of hitting the, the mainstream media hard because it affects Intel x86-64 processors, which as you guys know, Intel still has the huge majority market share, which means they kind of shoulder the burden of most of this problem and the way it's affecting people. But there's three problems out there. Between all three of them, all manufacturers uh, of CPUs and microprocessors are affected. Intel, AMD, and ARM even. The problem is, Intel's more affected by this on their hardware level bug because AMD and ARM are affected more on a software level. And the kernel bug that we're about to talk about with Intel, you have to have physical access to the machine on AMD CPUs to have the exploit available to you. Whereas Intel's memory leak and the way that the memory leak with the kernel is happening versus AMD. If you have an AMD processor, you're pretty much unaffected by this, even though the problem does actually still sort of exist for you as well. Now the kernel, and I don't mean Kentucky Fried Chicken kernel, although it does sound pretty good right about now. Uh, the kernel is kind of sitting in between the processor and the OS. It's a very basic way of describing it basically, but it holds very sensitive data and there's encryption levels and things that happen, but unfortunately the memory leak that's happening right now with the kernel is very uh, accessible and it's not encrypted, which means you, things like passwords and sensitive data access point to your computer and from your computer. It's, it's basically a back door that anyone can get into that machine and do anything they want. They can delete data, they can add data, they can run programs, run malicious software. If you thought the ransomware was a, was a, was a bad thing, that only affected certain people with, with certain uh, you know, patches that weren't in place. This affects everybody. Pretty much everybody. But like I said, when it comes to ARM and AMD, they're, they're easily more patched in AMD to have physical access to the machine. But the way AMD's architecture also uh, is built with the kernel, it's very different on the way that that memory is accessed or that kernel is accessed. And I'm glad I waited to do this video to today instead of yesterday because there was some late night developments with Intel and they finally addressed that, yes, this is real, yes, this is a problem, yes, we're we are working with the software vendors to fix this. And by software vendors, I mean your operating system. So if you're on Windows, of course, Linux, and even Mac OS, you are affected by this. Unfortunately, this is one of those times where you can't be like, well, I'm on Mac, I'm impervious to these types of things. No, you're, you're affected by this as well because you're running Intel CPUs. But Intel did in fact come forth and say, yes, this is a problem and we're working to fix this. It's really up to the software vendors to, to patch this because this is happening now with, on an OS level. And to understand more about this problem, you have to understand how they even arise. Is a lot of companies and even independent researchers without even being asked will go and hack websites. They'll hack software, they'll hack hardware. And then what they do is they present the data. These are good hackers. Sounds weird, right? These are good hackers who will present the data to the firms so that they can be fixed and patched and stuff, usually for a nominal fee. I mean, they make a lot of money doing this security stuff. And then there are firms that are hired to continually try to hack and break in backdoor whatever. And we used that when I worked in software. We had a firm that was constantly, this, their whole job was to just constantly test our stuff, find the exploits and let us fix them. So that is exactly what happened here, is a, is a firm found this exploit, which uh, they tested as far back as 10 year old processors and found that this exploit was present. So this is not new. This has been going on for over a decade. Now, when it comes to the problem, it's actually started to be fixed by some of the software vendors as recently as December. In fact, the beginning of December, a Mac OS update went out that had a fix in it for that. So as you can see, by the time we hear about it, it's been long, going on. And the reason for that is because you don't want to tip off the hackers 
because you wanna try and fix this before it makes mainstream. That way the hackers will have an opportunity to exploit this. So that's why a lot of this is kept hush hush, not because they're trying to, oh my God, protect market share and shareholders interest. Of course, that does indeed play a part in this because AMD's stock has soared since it came out that Intel CPUs are the ones that are being hit heavy by this. Just go look at the stock market for yourself and you'll see that AMD stocks have soared, especially since Tom Lindacki at AMD, who's an engineer for them, came out and said, look, we uh, are not accessing our, our, our kernel the same way. In fact, they have, a, they have something built in that handles uh, things very differently. It's called, and I gotta use my notes here because I don't wanna get this wrong. Um, it's called their kernel page table isolation feature. It protects against these types of things. So AMD actually has something in place that sort of gave them a little bit of added security towards this, although they are still affected a little bit, like I mentioned on the software side of things. You have to have physical access to the box to even have a chance of hacking the AMD kernel. So that's crazy how 2018 has started off. But here's the, here's the part that really truly affects us, is when this is fixed, it's going to be, we're gonna talk about Intel and Microsoft here, because this it, that's the majority. Right, the, all the distros and stuff on Linux and the way the Linux kernel's handled, um, that's already been worked on as well and it's being worked on and patches are rolling out for that. But of course, we are at the mercy of Microsoft and what they do with this. And they're gonna be kind of rewriting and putting out, a, I believe the update is supposed to be January 9th on this, this new update and in fact the update. That way you guys can check and see if you have it because unfortunately now to truly fix this, you're gonna have to have updates turned on. But it's gonna be update KB4054022. That is the update that is supposed to fix this. But here's the problem. Because of the way the kernel is being accessed and kind of rewritten with the OS to try and band-aid this, this is a band-aid fix. There's no other way to put it. This is a band-aid fix because there is a hardware level problem here. So until Intel fix this on new CPUs, our old CPUs are still gonna be using software band-aid fixes, which unfortunately can probably be broken and hacked as well. So you know people are gonna be attacking the fix. The fix is where you find the code for the problem. And that's what they're gonna attack, unfortunately. So just wait for that. The fix could slow down your Intel CPU by as little as 5% or as much as 30%, depending on your age of your processor and the workload on it. Now processors with PCID uh, are going to be a little bit less infected. And those are processors that are Haswell fourth gen and newer. The higher end the CPU and the stronger it is, probably the less impacted it will be performance wise, but it will have an impact no matter what these slower, more baseline entry-level CPUs are probably going to see a much higher hit. And then of course, those without PCID or older than Haswell fourth gen are going to see probably a significant hit because PCID is supposed to be what's kind of mitigating a lot of this performance loss. So the question is, how much is it going to affect you and impact you? I have no idea. We don't know until the patch rolls out worldwide and gets out to its users. And I'm sure you're gonna see people saying it's probably gone as higher than 30%. You might see people saying, I don't even notice a difference. Intel is pretty convinced that uh, average everyday PC consumers like in home PCs are not gonna notice really much of a difference at all. It's those that are running data centers and cloud farms and, and data farms and all that sort of stuff that are gonna notice more of an impact because those CPUs are being leveraged to their max capacity anyway. So once you're already at max capacity at your current workload and your current capability and it slows down, that's where you're gonna notice it, right? Because it comes off the top. If you're not using all of that performance headroom and it comes down up here, but you're still here, you're not gonna notice it that much. So that's the way that kind of works. Now in terms of gaming, because I know a lot of you guys are like, what about my games? Um, if you read some of the articles down below, you'll see that gaming was mentioned. The problem is the game titles that were used were not DirectX titles, they were, they were other APIs. And so the problem is DirectX being a Microsoft API and the way it's gonna access the operating system with the new kernel access software update could potentially see a negative impact. Who knows what that's gonna be? There's too many hardware permeations and variations out there for me to even begin to say whether or not you're gonna see any sort of a slowdown. Don't know if I'm gonna test this, quite honestly. I, I don't even know what kind of testing methodology or, or redundancy testing or, or regression testing I could even possibly do to try and give you guys an answer on whether or not you'd be affected, but maybe we'll play around with that a little bit. But five to 30% slowdown, imagine overnight with an update comes through and your CPU is 30% slower because of a hardware level bug that's existed for over a decade on Intel CPUs. This is not the way we needed to start 2018. This is not, I, I kinda, man, I feel bad for the Intel folks going to CES next week. This whole problem came out right before CES. I don't think I'd wanna go anywhere near those Intel booths. Uh, I, I, 
as a rep, I wouldn't want to go anywhere near Intel. I'd, I'd probably just be like, I'm, I'm done, I'm out, I quit. It'd be like Agent Pi trying to go to CES, which he's not going to, by the way. Gee, I wonder why. Anyway, so guys, that's that. That's very high level. Like I said, I, I, I highly recommend doing some reading. You'll find the links down below. All we can do is wait, and there is nothing we can do other than turn on updates now on Microsoft. We have no choice, unless you want to leave yourself exposed. I mean, if you want to be a, a, a CPU flasher, leave yourself exposed, that's on you. I mean, it really is, but I mean, the only way you can really fix this now is hope that the, hope that the CPU manufacturers and the OS vendors are talking to try and fix this as best they can. But I don't think this is going anywhere. I think, I think now that this has hit mainstream and the hackers now know where to look, and when the, when the patch rolls out, the patch is gonna obviously point hackers in the right direction on where to kind of zero in on where the problem is and start to reverse engineer that patch to try and access things. I, I'm telling you right now, man, hackers, it's, it's incredibly, it's, it, it's impressive how smart they are, but man, does it suck when it's used for malicious purposes. Anyway, sound off in the comments down below, guys. I'm really curious as to what your thoughts on this are. You guys wanted mine, here it is. Don't know what else to say. All right, guys. Thanks for watching, and we'll see. Uh, we'll see you at CES next week. But we got a, a video or two coming up before that, hopefully. Anyway, we'll see you guys then.